After over 13 years in the game, these are the best tips for graphic designers. Tip number one is to dedicate a space where you're gonna actually create. I think this is very important because it's going to give you a space that you can separate from the rest of your life. For me, it started with a dorm room, which then turned into like an office space, and then it turned into an actual office in my home. And it also helps later down the road when it comes to tax write-offs. Tip number two is to draw inspiration from the world around you. I'm most known for my entertainment and collage work, but I also learned a lot from corporate work. So taking the ideation of white space and using that to make entertainment a little less busy and also taking that busyness from entertainment to kind of level up different types of corporate designs, those have helped me in my career and gave me a nice balance when it comes to how to create. There's also sites like midjourney.com slash showcase, Pinterest, awards.com, Dribble, and even Graphic River. Those are all places where you're gonna find more inspiration from different creatives around the world. Tip three is to be a well-rounded designer. So it's important to master your skill set, but then you need to branch out and learn more. If I never took the leap into corporate design, animation, video editing, oil painting, I wouldn't have had the artistic eye that I have or the well-rounded skill set that you need to be competitive in the design market. Tip number four is to learn the shortcuts. So whether it's Illustrator, Photoshop, or whatever program you're using, learning the shortcuts is gonna save you time and that's gonna make you a better creative because time is technically money, but at the same time, your time is valuable. For example, Adobe has a list of all the shortcuts on their website. These are gonna be really helpful. I suggest you learn them and put them into use. Tip number five is gonna to be to work smarter. Now I'm a day one Photoshop guy, but there are sites like Photo Room that's gonna allow you to remove the background from an image in a matter of seconds. You also have tools like Mid Journey or Firefly where you can get the exact stock photo that you're looking for for your client without sifting through all these different sites and trying to get the perfect thing and then have to go into Photoshop and edit it. It can become a lot of work. Use a workaround, work smarter, and then use that to your advantage. Then you also have sites like Topaz where you can upscale an image to pretty much any size and then use that in your artwork. And it only takes, again, a matter of seconds. What I'm trying to say is there's way, way more tools that you can use to your advantage. So take advantage of those and work smarter as a creative. Tip number six is networking. And networking is not only going to conferences and different types of local places. You can also do it with the click of a button. With that click of a button, you're networking to people all around the world. So it's important to remember to network in a variety of ways because that is gonna definitely propel your career. A follow-up on tip six is to build relationships. And in my opinion, this is way different than networking. Now, I've done a lot of networking over the last 13 years, but not all of those turn into opportunities. I learned early on in my career that the best way to network and then start to build a relationship is to just be a human being. I made the most money in my career with people that I've known for years, that I know how many children they have, or at least met their children before, broke bread with them, went out to parties, had a good time, actually know things beyond just the project scope that we're trying to do. That's going to put you above other people. And there's other situations where I was not chosen as a creative because I didn't have the relationship the other creative did. So just keep that in mind. Build relationships. A bit different than networking. Now, I didn't say this earlier in this video, but I'm going to say now, build a portfolio. This is kind of a no-brainer in 2024, but if you don't have an online portfolio, there's plenty of places that you can go to actually build those out. I've done it with Wix, Squarespace, some do it with WordPress or whatever site you want to use. Either way, you should get into having an online portfolio that you update from time to time. Important point when it comes to portfolios is that you can curate the type of work that you want to get. So I talked about this in another video, watch that maybe later, but short story short, you're gonna to add to your portfolio what you wanna be hired for. And if you're just getting started out, create from scratch. So you're gonna create for yourself and put those things into your portfolio and use those as leverage on what your skill set is versus your actual resume. That key right there is what started my whole career. I had no resume, no experience or anything, and I started landing big projects and just clients in general because I was willing to go in and put the work in and actually make the portfolio that I want clients to reach out to me for. Next on the list is to stay consistent. One of the most powerful things that I learned in my career is that consistency is undefeated. I've opened Photoshop almost every day for the past 13 years. Let that sink in. If you want it, go and get it. You have people like me who have seen what happens when you show up for yourself 
way before you try and show for other people and what those results can be. And also, I'm rooting for you. Staying with this theme real quick, number 10 on the list is to let you know that in the past 13 years, not once has a prospective client asked me what college I went to. They only always ask, can you do this for my company? If you develop the skill, companies will pay for it. With that said, tip number 11 is don't take it personal, even though this is personal. It's easy to get into your feelings when a company decides to go with someone else so they don't like your work, but it is a part of the game. All right, tip number 12 is to never work for free. You can't convince me that my time is not worth anything, and I don't think yours is either, so act accordingly. Staying on this subject, number 13, make sure you get some cash up front. And this is just to avoid scams and avoid people not wanting to pay you once you're done with this whole project. So it's not necessarily about the money, but I am big on respecting my time and my client's time. Because the truth of the matter is, we don't get this time back. Therefore, I always ask for 50% up front. That way, I'm getting some cash. They understand that this is something that we're doing professionally. And then you move from there. Next on the list, since we're talking about money, keep raising your prices. And I'm going to put that with an asterisk because you can't just raise your prices just because. But the market is going to tell you when you need to. That's going to either be because there's so much demand that you can't supply it or you've cornered the market in a certain way to where they know to come to you when they need certain things. That way you can raise your price because you're more valuable in that space. Tip number 15 is to ask a client for the budget. I've talked about this in another video. This is something else that's really helped my career. This is as simple as adding to the form on the website that you already have and making this button mandatory. Anyone unwilling to add the budget, you don't want to work with them. Trust me. Last thing when it comes to money is to make sure you have a two tiered no process. So let's say you have a $50,000 project and you have 10 line items that you're actually going to deliver for this project and your client only has $25,000 in budget. What you can do is take the top three to four from that 10 and bring it over into a $25,000 project. What that's going to do is it's going to give you more money for your time because you're only doing a few things off this list and it's also giving them a break on the price. Okay, I lied, there's one more thing when it comes to money. Diversify your income. This is very important and you can do this with merch or courses or just different preset packs or different things like that. The passion is for profit. There is a point to this and we're all trying to put food on our table and make a living, right? Tip number 18 is to invest into your craft. This is important. It's something that you might not be able to do in the beginning of your career, but as you have the time and chance to, you should do it. Now, I started out with these old MacBooks and I used to crash the computer all the time just trying to do simple tasks in Photoshop and After Effects. And then one day, I went to my computer lab on campus and used the iMac. And I finished a project that would take me two hours on a good day on this slow old computer in 45 minutes. And then I started to realize the value of time and how much more work I can do or how I can just get some of my time back during the day. It was an investment. I used a credit card or whatever at the time, but I was able to do it and actually build out a better workflow as a creative. Tip number 19 is to take a break. As a creative, you're gonna have a lot of time on your hands, so it's important to actually unplug a little bit and just get away and actually get outside or just do something that doesn't deal with designing. The last tip of the day is to remind yourself that it is possible, and I'm living proof of that. Years ago, I was a kid living in a motor lodge, sketching Looney Tunes. So sometimes when I think about my life now, it does. It makes me trip out a little bit. Now, I'm not a multimillionaire yet, but I do make a nice living. And I've been pretty much in this career since college. There have been ups and downs. Don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. This is the time period of my life that I was waiting for when I got to digital art and creative work. So there's so much at your disposal right now. I hope that you A, take advantage of it, B, don't be afraid of what you're trying to do, and C, I hope you found this useful for yourself. My name is Jared Burke. I'm a graphic designer. I've been doing this for a long time. And as always, until next time.